Man, it doesn't get much better than Carter Finley Stadium here in Raleigh, the state capital of North Carolina, the 102nd North Carolina High School Athletic Association State Football Championship. What will be your final message before you uh, take the field in just a little while? You, you played for six, going. You played for 15 games. You played solid for 15 games. Why should it change now? Coach, we wish you the best of luck. We're looking forward to the end of the game where we can uh, stand down on the field and celebrate a Red Hawk State Championship coming back to Union County. It'll be a great feeling. Long overdue. Rolls out to the right. He's got a receiver oh, open. What a down pass. Monroe. How oh about God. that? That, that was special right there. That was number six. That's Desmond Robinson, another guy that we've well, called all season long for this Monroe Red Hawk football team. Robinson made it look easy on that one. Trips out to the left. Wall back to pass. He's got a receiver open. Got him. Touchdown, City. For Monroe. That was number one. Braxton not bringing it in. Guys on down here right on the end zone. You can see that play developing. He had the position on him. And a great throw by Zeph Wall right on the money. It goes off and it will flip the upright. This got my score 14 to nothing. The Monroe Red Hawks lead up the fun Wildcat here. And back to pass. He fires this one out and will be complete. He's down to the 10, the 5, touchdown, Monroe. J.D. McManus on the touchdown. As Zeph Wall pitches the uh, football back to the official and it makes your halftime score 21 to nothing, the Red Hawks uh, lead. Let's go down to Brian Stevenson with Coach South. All right, I'm down here with Coach. Obviously, it's good that you're up 21 nothing. What do you tell your guys? Well, hey, it's one half. I've seen this team on tape. I've seen this team put up almost 40 points a game. It's a long way to go. Another half. Shotgun formation takes the snap. It's going to fire it out over on the left-hand side. It's going to be complete. Big time reception. He's down to the 30. He's got one man to beat. Down to the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Yeah. Touchdown, Monroe. How about that? J.D. McManus, and he puts another six on the board for the Red Hawks. Quarterback here from Monroe, Zeph Wall was back to pass. He throws it out, getting the call. It's going to be Braxton Knotts over on the left-hand side. Knotts picks up a big-time block. He changes down to the field here, down to the 15, the 10, the 5. Braxton Knotts into the end zone. Touchdown, Monroe. What a big-time play by Braxton Knotts. Really turning on those jets. After I brought that screen pass in, the snap back. The safety is up, and it's it up. All right, that's good. The score, 35 to nothing. Monroe beats Bucks. And Monroe's going to send their field goal unit on. Yes, it'll be 47. Diaz is on here to kick. The snap's back. Diaz gets the stick behind it here. He's got one. He's got it. It's going to be good. <laughs> How about that? Your score, Monroe, 38, 7 Monroe will take home the 2AA state championship for 2015. The championship is coming back home to Union County after a 31-year drought. A lot of years of frustration released after this. Well, you know, we've seen it out there winning the game. We've seen it in the eyes with tears. We've seen it in the eyes with joy. We knew this much was special. Hey guys, someone try to grab Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah, your state champion. How does it feel, young man? Oh, man, it's like I said last, last week. It's a <laughs> blessing, man. Well, that's true. It, it is a blessing because those, uh, those guys work really hard and, um, you know, you have a perfect season and a state championship. I guess that's about all, uh, Coach Sal. That's about all you could ask of them. I don't think you could really have asked much more out of these guys than to not lose a game and win a state championship. <laughs> well, um, to be perfect, <laughs> to be 16 and 0, um, I mean, it's a blessing. You know, a lot of credit goes to our coaches and these young men that go out there every day and put in three hours of work. You know, we, uh, we made mention when we started that state championship broadcast. I told Mike, I said, "Do you realize that a third of a a third of a year, we've we've done this on Friday nights?" And I said, it, it, you know, we're ready for it to be over. Imagine how these kids feel. I mean, they've been at it for since what first day of August when you when you could get out there and really go, really go at it." Well, I, I think I think once you start winning, you know that that takes a lot. That um, you know, if if you're out there and you're not you're not performing, then you ready to do something different, but if you're out there and you're winning and, and you enjoy being around the people you're around, then you, you're okay with that, you know. Well, I'll tell you, I uh, we, we've covered, we actually covered eight of you guys' games this year. Uh, half the half of our broadcast season, we were with uh, we were with Monroe this year. But uh, 
I knew it from the jamboree from the FCA. Uh, the FCA, you could see it, and I, and what it was was the defense. I, I immediately, I told Mike, I said they got a defense this year. I mean, they they got a, you know, the defense looks stout, and that was in the preseason. Um, that's what I was most impressed with was you, you guys had a really good defense this year. Well, what we tell we tell our kids all the time. Uh, Offense win games, defense win championships. And in, in order to do that, like we did on Saturday, the defense had to come out and perform like they've done all year, and they did a great job. Yeah. Now, you brought a couple mm-hmm. of guys with you. Uh, Melvin Bonilla is uh, – I like the bow tie, Melvin. We'll speak. Well, let's, touch. Well, let's speak and see. Now, Melvin, you, you are a senior this year? Yes, sir. And did you – two years ago, uh, Andrews, High Point Andrews, were you on the team at that time? Yes, sir. So when you got there Saturday, you I guess – I guess you were one of those voices that could tell some of the other guys, hey, you know, I've, I've been here before. Is is it good to have people on the team who had been there before to kind of calm the other guys down? Oh, yeah, certainly. Um, you know, we went there two years ago, and, like, now, like, this year, like, it feels good to be there, but this time you want to win. Oh, yeah. So, right. you know, you, get, you don't know. Saturday, so. There, there's, there's a lot of kids who play high school football that never get a chance to do that at all. Yeah. Even fewer get a chance to do it twice. Yeah, the coaches, they um, they said in the locker room, you know, a lot of people don't get a second chance. And, you know, we have to take a chance to take advantage of it. Uh, were you nervous at all or did all that go away? Oh, uh, no, nah, I, went, I went nervous. I just played like every um, other game. I said, well, how, how is that not hard to do, though? Because the stadium is so much bigger yeah. and you know what's at stake. And, I, I mean, does that go to coaching to, to keep you guys calm? Cause yeah, how do you, you know. I, well, I, I love playing with my teammates. So, you know, it don't matter where we play at as long as I play with them. I'm not nervous or anything. Well, you're you're a you're a better man than I, cause I I played <laughs> high school football and I was nervous every time. Yeah, we were all nervous. <laughs> yeah, J- and Jalen Nixon, uh, Jalen, now you uh, are you a senior this year? Yes, sir. And uh, and you were not on the varsity squad the last time they went. Yes, sir. Uh, well, I was eight quarters, so I oh, was I got you. Yes, sir. I got so, you. Yeah, I was out there in the cold with them, going through what, everything. Now, be honest, what about you? Nervous. No, sir. No? Yeah, because it's a great group of guys. So, I mean. You must be yeah, some more kind of coach because I, <laughs> I don't know. Wow. Uh, we knew our fans was going to be out there supporting us, and it just felt like another game just with more importance. What, uh, in your opinion, as a senior, what were, what was, uh, and, and I'll say take the state championship out because obviously that was, uh, that was a huge win and that was the, the game that counted. But of the whole season, what was your, you guys' finest moment, in your opinion? Uh, I had to go way back to Weddington because that defined us as a team. I mean, other people thought, like, we would lay down and uh, all that stuff, but we stuck together and we knew that if we fought through that, we could get through anything because that, that was a good football team. Now, you guys at halftime in that game, uh, you were down, weren't you? Yeah, 17-0. That was the only game this season where you guys were – or down. I didn't know you. I didn't realize you were down by that. You were down by 17 points at halftime. At halftime, yes, sir. Mm. I guess you come back from 17 points and beat Weddington. That that really does make you a team. Yes, sir. It, it brought us together, like defense, offense, special teams, everything, because we knew everything count, and we had to play every play, every game, and it really, it really came down to help us. Mm. Uh, let's go back to Coach Sal for a moment. Uh, you you told me. I think it was two weeks ago on the sideline, uh, the last home game you had. Uh, I asked you about that Weddington game, and you said they grew up at that game. They everybody, they just came together. That was a, that was the moment in the season where they decided they were gonna they were gonna win. Well, you you had to have a game uh, along this road that we took. That it had to be a signature signature game. Yeah, that that stood out, and the Weddington game was that game. And and pretty much what I told him at halftime is is not a lot of things. You know, we didn't do a lot of hooping and hauling at halftime all year. It's about doing your job. Yeah. And if you go out there and do your job, then you're going to be okay. And that's what these kids done all year. State championship for the first time in, in the 55-year history. Been there a few times, but finally brought it home. First football team in Union County history to go undefeated. Uh, and Coach, you've worked with, with these young men for a long time. and You've coached uh, other stuff as, as well. You know, X's and O's is one thing. But, you know, you're reaching these young men at a time in their lives when there's a whole lot going on. Um, How do you you reach them? How do you get in there? Because every player is different. Some are going to need to be handled. You know, everybody on the roster is going to have, you know, different needs and different ways to approach. 
So what's, uh, how do you define your success? Well, you got you to be honest, you got to be fair, and you got to be consistent. Um, they're going to watch you. Uh, when somebody's not doing what they're supposed to do and, and you have to discipline them, mm-hmm. uh, you expect to do the same thing to the next kid that comes through. And, and when kids see that you're consistent with what you're doing, then they don't have a problem if it comes to them. Uh, coach is going to be fair with us. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're going to talk with you. We're going to probably give you a, a, a extra time to, to get it right, those kind of things. We're not going to put you off and say, you know, this is it kind of thing. We, we understand. You know, we all coaches have been there before, too. Mm-hmm. And, and at some point in time, somebody reached us in some kind of way. So, and that's our job. You know, our job is to teach and to make sure that when they leave Monroe, uh, that they're going carry them, to carry themselves the way they're supposed to. Mm-hmm. What, what all do you coach? Uh, football, basketball, and track. No golf? <laughs> I, I play a little golf. But <laughs> and, but I don't coach let's don't forget, you're an administrator, too. As, as well. well. So yeah, you got a real a regular job and all the, <laughs> the coaching duties. As well. <laughs> Where do you go from here, Coach? No, Undefeated we, season, state championship? Well, you, you, you always want to say, um, do it again. Let's try it again and see if we can do it again. And that's that's what we talked about as coaches. We we met a little <laughs> bit as coaches and 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 and, and to talk about the coaches, I mean, I'm more happy for those guys than myself because those guys get out there and they put a lot of time in it. Mm-hmm. And, and this is their first championship. And, and to be able to coach the three sports I coach, I, I have a ring in basketball and I have a ring in track. And uh, and to get those guys the opportunity to, to get one, it, that was special for me. Yeah, It's special for me. You're what now, the, the second longest tenured coach in the county, is that right? Uh, I'm not sure. I just well, know. The, no, you are. <laughs> I think you are. That's a week check. Or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. You, you it now. Yeah, you are. Yeah. You you might be the longest because Coach, uh, Coach Lowry retired now. So that But I'm be. not old. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not old. You've just been consistent with the, uh, with the program. Listen, it's not even uh, th- that whole uh, musical chairs, especially in high school football, because it's such a popular sport. Uh, it's uncommon for a coach to stay somewhere for you know, 10 years, or in Coach Lowry's uh, answer is, thir- you know, 30 years, or almost 30 years. That's just not common anymore for somebody to stay that long, and you've never, I don't think you've ever had any inkling of an idea of leaving Monroe. I don't think it's ever crossed your mind. Well, it's home. I mean, you know, my my family came through there. I came through there. My son came through there. I mean, you know. Oh, speaking uh, of that, here's football, a, a little football attracted Monroe. A yeah. little tidbit of knowledge people might not know. Um I found this out from a little birdie. The same day they played the state championship game, your son graduated college. You you, you went to, was it Fayetteville, before you ever state. came to Raleigh? That's correct. That's like the <laughs> opposite side of the state. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, it was a special day for the South family. Yeah, and, yeah. and so he that, he graduated uh, from college. And, and uh, what did he get his degree in? Uh, business. Oh, really? Good deal. Mm-hmm. So what did you do? Meet the bus somewhere along the way? <laughs> well, we uh, we left practice. Uh, they need to get Friday you a helicopter night. <laughs> <laughs> and spend the night in Fayetteville. And um, graduation was at, at nine o'clock. And then uh, after the ceremony, uh, we got together, uh, me and Jalen, and we drove to Aberdeen, and we had pregame with the team there. And I got on the bus there. Jalen, if he gets a helicopter, you learn how to fly it. <laughs> he said, "I don't fly. I don't yeah, fly helicopters." Yeah, huh? yeah, he probably would. Um, uh, there was no break either because it was straight into basketball season. I that's, mean, that's correct. Uh, yeah. you, you well, actually, season started before the state championship, didn't it? That's correct. And we got our first game today. Oh my lord! <laughs> <laughs> no rest for the world. Uh, no ever, rest. We, you're um, never going to get your voice back. We're going to try to get this one. Uh, uh, <laughs> we'll go out with um, not full gear, but we'll go out and we'll perform like we always do. Um, and play hard, and we'll have a couple of weeks to try to get it together. Mm-hmm. All right, let's grab a call here. David's calling in. How you doing, David? Hey, brother David Watkins. How are you? Hey, Dave. I just wanted to call and congratulate uh, the old school mate of mine, Mr. John Sauer. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, young man. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Take care. <laughs> That's Carolina Steamer, David yeah. uh, Watkins. So y'all must have went to school together. We did. We did. I didn't know you were that old. Yeah, I was going to say David. <laughs> I'm still in my 20s. <laughs> still in my prime. You know, um, a, a lot of people that are, well, if you're a Monroe fan, you may know this, but a lot of people may not either. But um, uh, Coach C is on the sideline uh, helping you guys. And I always think back uh, the whole time I've been doing um, broadcasting high school football, one of the toughest games I ever watched was years ago. I guess it was 12 or 13 years ago when Monroe went to Charlotte Catholic. 
mm. and and lost that game. And it was just it was one of those games where I think Starcevic was playing there then, and uh, it was just one of those games where you could see that they gave it everything they had, and it just. It just wasn't, and I still think about that. So when I saw him, I asked him about that on the sidelines, and he said, "No, he said I'm retired, but I asked, would they let me come help?" And you know, he's humble about it. Bobby's a good coach. Bobby's a great guy to have down there with you. Oh, most definitely, he's he's been there for years. You know, yeah. Bobby was the head coach at one time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and another guy too is Tony Byam. You yes. Know, yes. You yes. talk about a lot of experience down there, and, and and when I talk to those guys and they want to come back, I, I mean, those guys, Tony Tony Byam was one of my coaches. Uh, Bobby yeah. was a guy that was at Mount Pleasant that we competed against, and and they were great defensively. And I said we need to get that guy on our side. Mm-hmm. So to have well, those two should, guys with should. us, oh yeah, it was. It, yeah. I mean, it's a great feeling to be around. I guess people they, that have the knowledge that they have. The head mm-hmm. coach is no different than a player. You surround yourself with good people, and you'll end up being successful. Oh, you yeah, have you to, know, to, you to have be able to, to do that. Yeah. Um, but before we before we run all the way out of time, Melvin, I'll ask you something. Uh, being a senior and, and high school football being over, what are your plans for the future? Well, I played basketball too, so so you're just going right <laughs> to the next sport. <laughs> <Yo, laughs> <hotel. laughs> so. Yeah, so wow. It, what Jay, what about you? You play basketball too? Oh uh, yes, sir. I play <laughs> basketball too. Do either one of y'all run track? Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just no time anymore. Uh, I mean, it's it's high school, so you gotta. Cherish the moment, and like I said, we love like all of us play like everything with each other. So, and we've been doing this since little kids, so it's fun and it's and we like winning. I, you know, I, like I doing it tomorrow. I guess that, that really, if if you compete in basketball and football, and I know some of the kids do run track, that there's never a chance for y'all to get out of shape. I, I mean, y'all are perpetually in shape because you're always doing something. Yes, sir. Yeah, we know that uh, make us better in the other sport. That way, we have an advantage on the. Other team and it shows. It helps. Well, you, you know, y- y'all been together for so long, you know what the other person's doing, what they're going to do. You know, it. You yeah. know, you played together for so long, you can you, you anticipate what's about to happen. Yes, sir. Uh, that's the that's the joyful thing about it. Like, what makes it fun? Like the late practices. Like we're okay with it because we're there with each other. So it's like it's all fun. The, the coach is behind us, so we know everything we put in was going to come out. And be a good, good show. What's your plans for uh, when you graduate? Um, to go to college, uh, major in communications, yeah, and play football, and go from there. Yeah. yeah so, so, so you uh, uh, you have plans to play college ball? Do you have you Do you have your eyes on any place in particular? Uh, no, not yet. Not any t- place in particular. I'm just really trying to trying to get there. Yeah, you need to concentrate on high school right now. Yeah, and let that <laughs> yeah, take care. Of, <laughs> let that take care of itself. Uh, uh, in your own opinion, um, what was your personal best game of the season? Uh, my personal. Best? I know you're humble, but you still uh, you, you know when you had a good performance. Uh, when I had a good performance, huh? Oh yeah, Mount Pleasant, <laughs> Mount Pleasant, uh, Mount Pleasant. Yeah, I had a uh, diving fingertip catch on the ground in that game. I had a one hand touchdown catch. That was probably my best <laughs> game. But yeah, that was that's Mount Pleasant was probably my best game. And what about you? Game. What about you, Melvin? Uh, my best game was against Weddington. Uh, the coaches, um, Coach Byron, he told me that I got to stay with this one receiver. They receiver number three. I had to stay with him the whole game. <laughs> That's what I did. Just stay with him. I like that. And did you have a good game? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and we won. So, hey. now, what about you after high school? What are, what are you playing? Uh, I want to go to college football, um, major in engineering or business. Engineering. Wow. Wow, that's a uh, you know uh, that's it's good to say it now. Now, coach, when these guys and some of these guys obviously will play college football, some won't. Um, when 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 the guys that are going to be able to play college football, when that time comes, th- are you a part of that? And and, and I and I don't mean that in the context of y- you decide where it is they go, but some of these some of these guys uh, face some really. Like, for example, uh, Jamison Crowder ended up at Duke. He's a Washington Redskin now. There had to come a time when you knew and he knew that there were colleges that were courting him and wanting him to come to school. Uh, are you a part of that process with these young men to try to help them decide? Uh, most definitely. Uh, um, and that process is going on right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, coaches are coming in and out the door. Uh, and every time a coach comes there, you know, we bring our kids down, introduce them to them, and they talk to them about – you know, what they expect, the future, and then they'll go back and evaluate. Yeah. And we talk it all the time. So 
at Monroe for the last maybe 10 years, it's been a revolving door when coaches is coming in there. And that's not necessarily because they're great athletes. It's because of what they're doing in the classroom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I've told 100 people, you don't go to Duke. Uh, you don't go to Duke if you're not smart. You just don't. Yeah. Scholarship or not, that's, that's a prestigious school. <laughs> and you better believe it. And, and not only necessarily Duke, pretty much any university now. And that's one thing these young men didn't say about themselves that I don't mind saying. They're great students. Yeah. You know, you look at their record and what they've done at high school academically, mm-hmm. they're in the top of our class. And let's grab a call here. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Hey. I was starting to sit back and meat. Uh, we, uh, yeah, we'll get around <laughs> to it just a little. She's talking about the wheel of meat's going to spin in a few minutes. Yeah, we'll get around to that. In a in a uh, in a few moments, when, when that when they do come, when it comes time, uh, like I want to say, it Mason Sledge, he played at UNCC, right? That's he, he went on there, and so did a lot of other guys. Uh, do, do you are you humble about giving these young men your opinion about what you think would be in their best interest? Because you know these you know these students good enough to know where they're going to be a good fit, at least in your opinion. Well, if you've been around, been around me long enough, you know me, I'm going to, I'm going to say, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you can take it either way you take it. And, and with these kids about their future, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like I can say it because I've been there. I, I've had a chance to get, you know, during my day to get recruited and, and, and then I went to Appalachian mm-hmm. and that process wasn't an easy process. And, and you need people around you that's going to tell you, the goods, the bass. And, mm-hmm. and and if you go out there and nobody helps you with that, you're going to be back home or you're not going to be successful. So I feel like that's part of the job that you have as a head coach to give these kids your opinion uh, about, about the situation. And I know enough college coaches out there. I've been around a long time to know, you know, well, I feel like a kid may be successful, but at the bottom, at the end of the day, these guys got to make that decision for themselves. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that's going to be there for four years. They're the ones that's going to survive. And and just because it's one of the top D schools in the country may not be a good fit for you. Yeah. You also got to look at, am I going to be able to get on the field? How am I going to be academically? Mm-hmm. So you got to look at all those things. It, mm-hmm. it is, uh, what is Isaac uh, Blakeney? What is he doing now? Have you spoken with him? I talked to Isaac a couple of weeks ago, and mm-hmm. he was still rehabbing. And his word is once he get healthy, he was going back to the Redskins. Awesome, awesome, yeah. good, great. I mean, that's that's great news. And uh, and uh, do you still have much contact with Jameson? We do actually. Uh, after graduation, my son talked to Jameson on Saturday, but uh, along during the season, uh, we pretty much talk on a regular basis, particularly on Fridays. Mm-hmm. Uh, this being a Saturday. He, he still goes to this high school coach. He, does he still ask you advice on stuff? He don't. I mean, he's a humble kid. I mean, Jameson, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he, he's one of the special ones. He, uh, okay. We don't talk a lot about about success. We just talk about how you doing. Yeah. Uh, he talks a lot about the, at the team, how well they done. You're talking about guys that was happy for us to win it. He was definitely one of those guys. Oh, sure. I remember the, uh, the day of the draft, I happened to walk in Mr. G's, and he was in there and I sat and talked to him for maybe ten or fifteen minutes, and he told me he said, every time his phone rings, I'm scared to death. He said, "I'm I'm serious. He said, I just about jump every time it rings, because <laughs> he was, you know, that was an important day for him. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah. And and uh, no, that, listen, uh, the, these young men are very deserving of all the success that they had. You can't ask more from them than an undefeated season. And uh, do you? How far back in grades do you go? Are you hanging out watching these middle school uh, kids play? Uh, you, if you're going to be the head coach, you got to be watching your upcoming talent. I mean, well, you gotta... we we have some of our coaches on our staff still go down and help with those teams. Yeah, and and I'm one of those guys that uh, I sort of sit back and watch a little bit, and you can hear and you can see better than you can go out there and be on on the field. Have you been coaching yeah. long enough to teach somebody's kid yet? Have you been coaching long enough that you're you, you're coaching one of your former players' kids? Yes, you have. <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> and 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 does the apple tend to fall from the tree, or do you say, "Oh God, this is going to be <laughs> well, <laughs> we, have full. we have some we have some great conversations about some of those things. <laughs> uh, you act just like your daddy. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, congratulations, man. We appreciate it, and we appreciate you taking time. And you guys, congratulations on on what you did this year. Y'all should be very proud. And uh, and this will be something. No matter what happens, you might not play football in college. You might not play professionally. Uh, but nobody will ever be able to take this away from you. You'll That's always have much. this. You'll always think about it. So, Coach, we let. I know they're in a hurry to get back to school. I can see it in their face. It's the last day they want to get back and finish this day. <laughs> yeah. We thank you, Coach. Well, thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Thank you all for having us.
We'll break here. We'll be back. And yes, all everybody in the world is worried about the wheel of meat. It will spin. And just a moment, somebody have a chance to win some fabulous meat prizes right here on the Mighty 1190. Y'all hang on. It's coming up next here on Wixie.